All right, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is somewhat trivial, I suppose. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the clinical significance of them here in just a bit, but let's go ahead and talk about how we can actually identify these things. So we've gone through all the major rhythms. You guys are all up on your rhythm strip interpretation. Uh, we've gone through a majority of the 12 lead findings. Certainly we've talked about uh, ischemia, infarction, injury. Um, we've talked about some of the things that can confound a STEMI, like uh, bundle branch blocks, and we'll talk about some other things. Uh, so I think we're sitting, in, particularly the bundle branch blocks and axis deviation, I think we're sitting at a good place to talk about fascicular blocks. So to understand fascicular blocks, we just need to review the basic anatomy of the ventricular conduction system. So here I have a real terrible drawing. You'll just kind of have to use your imagination. Uh, but if you can imagine that this is the AV node here, all right, and then the AV junction and the bundle of Hiss, um, what do I have here? That's your left anterior. Well, just in general, what do we have here? Bundle, bundle, bundle. bundle, bundle, bundle. Okay, so what's this one right here? Left. Right. The right, 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 yeah. So this is my right yeah. bundle branch, and then this one over here is my left bundle branch. And you'll notice that the left bundle branch bifurcates into two major branches. There are actually three um, smaller branches, but only two are, are particularly relevant. Um, so there's one that kind of wraps around the front part, and we call that the what? No, 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 those are arteries. These are... We're talking about the conducting system, so it wraps around the front. The left tentacle. Okay, the left, sort of. Left posterior? Left anterior. There you go, left anterior fascicle. Okay, the left anterior fascicle, you just kind of have to imagine that it's coming around the front. And then what's this one that goes, so you go to the front of the ventricle and the back of the ventricle? Left posterior? Be a left posterior fascicle. You guys cool with that? So what we can get, you guys are cool with bundle branch blocks, right? Mm -hmm. You're cool that if you see a widened QRS in V1 with downward deflection because you're doing the turn signal criteria, you know that that is a block of the entire left bundle branch. So we can have situations where not the entire bundle branch can get blocked. You can have just a blockage of one or the other of these fascicles. And so that's what we need to do, is we need to be able to identify the presence of a left anterior fascicle, fascicular block, or what's known as a left anterior fascicular hemiblock, or the presence of a left posterior fascicular block or a left posterior fascicular hemiblock. Now, if I have both fascicles blocked, what do you think we're going to have? It's a left bundle branch block. A left bundle branch block or a bi, bi fascicular block. Okay, that, that kind of makes sense, right? Yes. Um, you're basically blocking that whole bundle branch. So let's talk about that. And what I want to do is I want to just kind of draw a little algorithm out that we can follow to understand this. And are you guys okay with the cardiac conduction system? Mm -hmm. Okay, the, where the fascicles are in, in relation to the bundle branches, AV node. Okay, pretty, pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy stuff. So this is what we're going to do to identify the presence of fascicular blocks. Okay, either a left anterior uh, fascicular or a post uh, left posterior fascicular, bifascicular, trifascicular. We'll talk about what that may mean. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to start and I'd like to ask the question, is there pathological left axis deviation? So, is there patho left axis deviation? And I'll put a question mark there. Now, you can either go, yes, there is, or no, there isn't. You guys, what, you guys cool with that? Yes or no? Pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy, all right. Okay, let's say that it's yes. Bless you. Getting sick? Hope not. All right, 
So let's say that it's yes. Let's say that we have pathological left axis deviation. If that's your only finding, okay, pathological left axis deviation is going to give you a left anterior fascicular block. A left anterior fascicular hemiblock. Okay, just the presence of pathological LAD. Does, does that make sense? Yes. Everybody's okay with that? Okay, because what, what does that mean? Okay, that means that I've taken this fascicle out, but this one's working. Cool. Is that the end of the story, though? No. No. What, what next? Well, we have to address the no. Okay, let's address the no. So let's say that there is no pathological LAD. So then what you want to assess for is you want to assess for the presence of right axis deviation. Okay, is there right axis? If the answer to that is yes, okay, what do you suppose is going on? And you have a right A. Right or a left posterior, left posterior okay. fascicular hemiblock. You guys are on the right, right direction. Okay, so I have a left posterior fascicular hemiblock. Right. So I've either done I've either done one of two things on the ECG or possibly none of this. I either have identified a patho, patho left, and I know my patient has a left anterior for sure, or I've identified right axis deviation, and I know that they have a left posterior fasc fascicular hemiblock. You guys cool with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where we're sitting. In either case, if I've identified an anterior or posterior block, the next question that I need to ask, and these will actually <clears throat> converge on one another, the next question that I need to ask, here we go. What do you think? What do you think would, would be helpful to ask? A new onset. Well, maybe new, but we're trying we're, we're using this to identify the ECG findings, not really a treatment or anything. Is there a bundle Is there, break? Elevation? Is there a, say it again? Is there a bundle branch? Cool. And which bundle branch are we gonna want to look at? Left. Left. Well, we're already looking at the left side, right? Ah, oh, there we go. Because if I just have a left anterior or left posterior, then I know that I don't have a full on left, right? So the next question to ask is, do I have a right bundle branch block? Because here's the problem. If I have a left anterior fascicular hemiblock block plus a right bundle branch block, what does that give me? Try fascicular. Try? Bifascicular. That gives me a bifascicular <laughs> block. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. So a left anterior fascicular hemiblock would be a block here, plus a right bundle branch would be a block here. That's two fascicles, and I still have my left posterior fascicle that, that's working. Does that make sense? However, if I take the case where I have a left posterior fascicular hemiblock and a right bundle branch block, the left anterior fascicle is still intact. Either way, I have a bifascicular block. Now, I will just write that in before I ask you guys a question here. Bifascicular block. Now, uh, what's the clinical, what are the clinical implications? Why do we really care? How does this affect us? Other than just being something purely academic that, that we're going to talk about. What are some, some clinical applications that you might? Oh, you wear the skinny or injury in the heart? If you have it all on It could. Can we have a right bundle branch block? Can we have <clears throat> an infarction on the right side later on? Possibly, but the, the right bundle branch, is it is it fed by the right core artery? Mm -hmm. No. Right, left? A left anterior descending. Okay, maybe, but something a bit more practical. Because once you identify STEMI ischemia, you know we manage it pretty generically. Yeah. It might be out there, but I'm gonna go with how aggressive 
very fast to move after transportation because if they start building up that block mm -hmm. and they, they are having a STEMI and the AD and SA note goes out, that means there's no, nothing the ventricle is going to fire off. Cause there you go. You, you're definitely almost right there. So the progression of fascicular blocks, if this progresses, what we need to anticipate is a complete heart block. That's really what looking at these progress tells us is, is our patient headed toward a complete heart block? Are we going to need to pace them? And if you pick somebody up and when you first assess them and all they have is a, a left anterior fascicular hemiblock, that's not too concerning, right? You have a lot of pathways still open. But then as you're waiting for AMR to roll on by and you kind of, you look and you go, what do the QRSs look like they're getting wide? Um, or if you're transporting somebody in AMR, you're doing a longer transport, and you see those QRSs kind of widen out, you run another 12 lead, and now you have a right middle branch block, what does that tell you? It's progress. You're actually looking at their cardiac conduction system through, through the ventricles, you're looking at those connections fail. And that patient, the, the further on down you, you see, the, the further on down they go here, the closer and closer they get to needing pacemakers, atropine, transcutaneous pacing, things like that. So that's the real clinical implication of all this stuff. Okay, so if they have a bifascicular block, what do you suppose the next question is to ask? If you had to guess, what's the next symptomatic, question? Symptomatic, not symptomatic. No, we're, this is purely ECG criteria oh. here. Okay, yeah, I haven't even talked about treatment. Lead placement? Maybe. Hopefully, you're hope, hopefully your leads are placed, right? Yeah. What would be even worse than having a bifascicular block? Trifascicular tri block. Oh, trifascular block. So I need to identify trifascicular block. And the easiest way to do that is, does your patient have any sort of AV block? Okay, they have an AV block. If the answer to that is yes, they have a trifascicular block, and you should probably have the pacer pads on them, and you should be getting ready to pace them because they may very well quickly deteriorate into an escape rhythm or a complete heart block. If the answer to that, however, is no, then you are still here at a bifascicular block. Does that make sense there? All right. So, does that, does that kind of make sense? Sort of, yeah? yeah I got a couple of questions. So. Sure, go right ahead. Starting back from the beginning. Okay. To figure out whether we have either a left anterior or left posterior, all we're looking at is the axis deviation. Just the axis deviation. We don't need to look at anything. Just the axis. Just the axis. Just the axis at this point. Yeah. Okay. So then once we've determined those, mm -hmm. then we look at the 12 lead and see if there's a bundle branch block. Yes. Now, if you have a big old ugly left bundle branch block, do you really need to go through the this here? No. No, because what do you have? Uh, a complete left bundle Boom, branch block. right. You've taken out both fascicles, so this is this is this. You're not going to do this if you have a big old left bundle branch block. But this is assuming that you don't, and you're having to be more subtle. You're looking at the subtleties. This is this is real fine subtle stuff that you're looking at the 12 lead. And I actually have several examples, and we'll work through these. Um, but yeah, so this is just going off of your axis deviation. But know that if you have a big old left bundle branch block, well, that pretty much tells you what. That you have a complete. Yeah, branch. that you've taken out both of those those fascicles there. Does that make kind of make sense there? Mm -hmm. Right. So if there's if there's right axis deviation, mm -hmm. that more than likely indicates the posterior. The left posterior block. fascicle. Yes. And then we have to look for a right bundle branch block. Yes. Um, because if you have a right bundle branch block and a fascicular block, that means two of the three highways through the ventricles have been cut off. Sir? 
Uh, this is, what's the hemi mean? Hemi, one side, like hemi, hemiplegia, oh, okay. or hemiparesis. Yeah. So do you have to put that in? Is that, is that you, No, you don't have to, oh, okay. but it's commonly, you, you know, like if you read about it, that's how, it, how it's commonly printed. Um, but there's no difference between if somebody says a left anterior fascicular block or a hemi block, it's the same thing. Yeah, I'm just throwing it in for complete pur purpose of completion. Okay, so let's go ahead and just look at some examples. How does that? Do you guys have this written down? You guys cool with this? Yeah, I have another right. question. Oh, you do? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It. Throw it at me. So the way that I under or up till now, the way that I understood. What how blocks worked was that it would progress over time. So first degree would turn into... It may or may not. May or may not progress. Okay. So that's what I was going to ask is, is this something that it would be a patient that already has a history of, say, a, a MOBIS and now it's progressing into the complete block? Because that's, at the end of this, we're looking to see if there's a complete yeah. block. Right? No, you're looking for a, any kind of AV block. Oh. Okay. Even if it, 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 even, and I have an example, even if it's a bifascicular of the first degree AV block, that means that you have both of these blocked off and a first degree block through here, right? Okay. Um, yeah, so it may or may not progress, but you can see these progress. You know, when you run your initial 12 lead, and, and, and when you run a 12 lead on somebody, does everybody that's having a big MI, do they have the characteristic findings, the, the, the elevation, the Q waves? Not always, right? So if you have somebody with chest pain and you're on a 12 lead, you may just see some subtle things. You know, you, your initial 12 lead may be normal sinus rhythm, right? No, nothing going on. And then maybe their pain's getting, getting worse or you run another 12 lead and now all of a sudden you see a hemi block. And then you run it again and now you see a right bundle branch. Like, wow, I can actually see this guy's or gal's cardiac conductive system um, being taken out, and I know that 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 twelve lead there, I believe, has a hemi block uh, posterior. No, 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 posterior no. here, I, I forget what anterior. Yeah. Um, there you go. So let's look at some examples. How does that sound? Okay. Yeah. That'd be helpful. All right. Cool. Uh, 